distributive property today. Um, the distributive property, uh, some of you have seen this or are familiar with this. Um, the keyword is we're distributing, right? We're distributing. So if I'm given something times a sum or a difference, some number times a sum or a difference, doesn't matter what numbers they are. So right now I'm saying A times the sum of B and C. We have to distribute uh, what's being multiplied on the outside. So we're saying A times the sum of B and C. So now we have to take A times B and A times C. So A times B gives me, well, A times B, AB. I'm bringing my plus sign now, and A times C is AC. Okay? Looks pretty straightforward. Uh, the thing that we, we run into some trickier things is when we throw in some negatives, we throw in subtraction signs, um, we throw in exponents, all kinds of things like that. So we just got to be careful. Take our time um, and follow that distributive process. Looking at number one here. All right, I just got three times the sum of x and seven. So three times x plus seven. We're just distributing, take that x, take it times your first term, so three times x. Uh, and I'm also taking three times a positive seven, so I get a positive 21, and it is simplified. Okay, that's how we simplify something, we distribute, right? Uh, and simplify it as far as you can. Looking at the next one, uh, now I got four times three terms on the inside. Um, we're taking four times y squared plus 8y plus 2. So I just distributed it to each term. Take that 4 times the y squared first. So 4y squared. Then we take 4 times 8y, which is a positive 32y. And then I take 4 times positive 2, which is a positive 8. Okay, and it's already simplified. And we're going to look into um, when it, there's more to simplify after we distribute. Okay, once we start talking about terms and like terms. How about number 3? Does it matter which way I write this? Could I have written the negative 3 out front this way? And 2 minus 5m? Yeah, either way it works. It's totally fine. It doesn't matter. Because um, multiplication is commutative like we talked about, right? So I can put the negative 3 on either side. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to look at, it at this first situation. And I still just distribute, right? Distribute to the first term. Still go to that first term. So negative 3 times 2. Well, negative 3 times 2 is what? Negative 6. Okay. And here's the other trick to this next part. This is where it gets trickier. So there's two ways to think of this. Some people will bring down the minus sign, which is great. So that means that minus sign is gone, right? And now you're taking negative 3 times 5m, which is a negative 15m. Okay, well now I have negative 6 minus a negative 15m. You don't want that. Never have minus a negative because minus a negative is really adding a positive, right? You change to a plus sign and add the opposite. So this is my answer, negative 6 plus 15m. Okay? I don't like to think of it out that way. What I do is I take it term by term. So I take negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. And then I like to take negative 3 times negative 5m. I include that sign. Well, negative 3 times negative 5m, negative times a negative is a positive, And 3 times 5m is 15m. So negative 3 times 5m is a positive 15m. And then I'm already simplified and I don't have to worry about wasting that whole step. So if you include that sign inside the term, so negative three times negative five. Same thing kind of works over here. I take negative four times negative eight, right, I'm distributing. So negative four times negative eight is a positive 32. And now I'm gonna take negative four times negative three B, which negative times a negative is a positive. So negative four times negative three B would be what? 12 B, and that is Simplify. All right, terms, a term could be a number, a variable, or the combination of both, whether it's a product or a quotient. So basically different types of terms. Three would be a term, x would be a term, negative four, y squared would be a term, right? It's got a number, or the product of a number and a variable, um, different things like that. And if I looked at, um, if I put some signs into an expression, so if I said like 3x plus 4y to the third minus 8w, um, something like that. So one of my terms would be 3x, right? It's everything that's being added. So one of my terms is 3x. Another term would be um, 4y to the third, so that's another term. And my last term, it's everything that's being added, isn't it? Well, a negative 8w is actually being added, right? If I added the opposite. So negative 8w is actually being added. So that would be another term. And that's how I think of it. I don't even, I just include that sign. 
is that negative 8w? That's just my whole term right there, negative 8w. Yeah? So when I, you hear me talk about terms, that's what I'm saying. That's all the terms of the expression. Like terms are things that have uh, the same variable to the same power, right? And we can combine those. Um, so for example, looking uh, at this expression here. Well, 4 is what we call a constant, right? It's a number. It doesn't change. It's 4, right? It's a constant. Well, if there's any other constants, those are like terms. It looks like I have a negative 6, don't I? So those are like terms, a 4 and a negative 6. Well, 4 minus 6, or 4 plus negative 6 gives me negative 2. So I can combine those because they're like terms. Well, do I have a like term with this y? I don't, do I? Some people try to combine it with a y squared, but you can't do that because this has a squared on it, right? That's a totally different term. So I just have to bring down the 8y because it doesn't have any like terms. Okay, I'm done with that. Look at the next one. I got a negative 6x. Well, I got another term of x, don't I? I got a positive 2x. Well, negative 6 plus 2, um, or negative 6x plus 2x gives me what? Negative 4x when I combine those. And lastly, I don't have any other y squared, so let's just bring down my plus 2y squared. So that's how I'd simplify it. I just combine like terms. And our last term down here, coefficient. Um, if you ever hear me use the term coefficient, I'm just talking about the numerical part of a term. The numerical part of a term. So if I look up negative 2, that's a constant, so there is no coefficient. Looking at this term, the 8 would be the coefficient, right? The number in front, the numerical part. The coefficient over here would be negative 4. The coefficient on my 2y squared would be 2. Okay? It's just the number that's in front of the variable. It's the numerical part of the term. So that's the coefficient. Simplest form, we just did that, right? An algebraic expression when it has no like terms and no parentheses. If I look back, okay, we just got this expression into simplest form by combining like terms. Get rid of parentheses and combine like terms. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get, get it in simplest form. So uh, combine like terms, get rid of parentheses, whether you're using distributive property or anything like that. So first one, 8p minus 5p, like terms, they both have a p. So 8 minus 5 is 3. So I have 3 p's, right? So all you got to do, keep that variable. Looking over at the next one, 5sr plus 2sr. Even though I have two variables, they're still the same term, right? They're 5sr's and 2sr's for a total of 7s. R's, okay, I'm just combining like terms. Those are still like terms, even though there's two variables. That they're the exact same thing. Looking at three, they all have B in it, but two of them have B squared. So those are the only two that are alike. So I can combine those. A 12B squared minus an 8B squared gives me 4B squared. I'm done with those. And I didn't use this plus 6B, so I got to bring it down. And now I'm done. No more like terms. Okay, no more like terms. And over here on this last one, uh, 7a plus 4 minus 6a squared minus 2a. I just start with the first term. I look at 7a. Do I have any like terms? Sure. Here's another term with a, negative 2a. So 7 minus 2a gives me 5a. Right, 7 minus 2, 5a. Um, 4, I don't have any other constants, and I don't have any a squared, so I can just bring those down. Okay. So plus 4 and a minus 6a squared, and that's simple. Sometimes your book might put it in um, a different order. Uh, a lot of times they'll put the highest uh, power out front. So they might write it like this. That's okay. Okay, I'm accepting either answer. That's totally fine like that. If you want to switch them around, that's fine too. I don't care. Either answer works. Either or, right? We're not worrying about standard form yet. Hey, we just talked about that, no? And lastly, write an algebraic expression for each verbal expression. Then simplify, indicating the properties used. So basically, we're going to simplify, but we have to write our algebraic expression now from what's given. So let's start with the first part. 6 times the sum of x and y increased by 4. Okay, well, let's start with this first, first part. 6 times the sum of x and y. Well, I'm taking 6 times that entire sum. So if I think about that, I can't just say 6 times x plus y. That doesn't work. I'm taking 6 times this entire sum. So what do I have to put around the x and the y? Parentheses, right? So it's got a little dis uh, distributive property, doesn't it? So this, the sum of, causes me to put the parentheses, right? 6 times that entire sum. 
Yeah. Okay, on to the next part. Increased by, well, increased by, what's that, a plus sign? Okay. Four times the difference of 5x and y. So same type of thing, except now we had difference instead of um, sum. So I'm taking four times this entire difference. So I have to put it in parentheses. So I'm taking four times that difference. Four times that difference. All right. And now to simplify, right, I either got to get rid of all parentheses and combine like terms. So let's look at the first part. Distribute that 6. 6 times x. 6x. Six, 6 times a positive y. Positive 6y. Distribute our next term. Always distribute the sign that's in front of it as well. So I'm going to distribute a positive 4. So positive 4 times 5x is a positive 20x. And a positive 4 times a negative y is a negative 4y, right? A positive 4 times a negative 4y is a negative 4y. And now we can go and combine like terms after we got rid of the parentheses. So it looks like I have a 6x and a 20x, which combine into a 26x. Done. Um, and I have a 6y and a negative 4y for a positive 2y, right? 6 minus 4. And now there are no more like terms. So I box it in, and we're done. There you go. So just get everything as simplified as you can.